This week for EMN5, we're going to talk about calcaneal fractures. Now, calcaneal fractures are usually caused from a fall from height and landing really hard on your heels so that most of the force goes into the heels. For an adult, that's probably about at least an eight foot drop um, or more. In an elderly person, they'll remember that it actually can be a lot less. Another name for this type of fracture is lover's fracture, I guess, because the lover is jumping out the window in an attempt to get away unseen. Here's just a brief review of the anatomy. So here's the calcaneus in the back, the heel. Um, this is the calcaneal tuberosity in the back here, and then this would be the calcaneal body. And it has a lot of different um, articulations with the talus. So it has this posterior, the medial, or, or the middle, and then the anterior um, articulated surface. And most of the fractures, about 75%, are interarticular um, with the subtalar joint. The main presentation is going to just be pain, swelling, bruising. Um, you're probably going to be thinking also of an ankle fracture. And make sure and ask what the mechanism was. And also specifically, they'll have pain with squeezing of the heel. This is one other thing to look out for. It's called Mondor sign. It's the plantar ecchymosis that you see here, and it's pathognomonic for a calcaneal fracture. As far as imaging, we're just going to get an x-ray, we're going to get a lateral and AP view, you're probably getting this anyway based on the amount of swelling. You're looking for either calcaneal fracture or, like I said, any other fractures of the foot, dislocation, um, or uh, ankle fractures. This is one other view you might consider, it's called the Harris view, and it gets a really good look at the uh, calcaneus just on its own. It might give you a little more clue as to where the fracture is, if there is one. If you do think you have a calcaneal fracture, the next step is to get a CT of the foot and heel. This is mostly to help define where the fracture is and help the orthopedic surgeon decide their management for the future. Now, one big thing we have to look for in our lateral view of the x-ray is to measure the bowler's ankle. And this is something I encourage you to do for every x-ray you get of the ankle or the foot is just to even just eyeball this angle. Because if it's flattened at all, it could be a calcaneal fracture that you might not otherwise see. So that's something I want you to always do when you're looking at these x-rays. So this is the angle, and I'll describe it here. So basically, you're going to be drawing some lines. It's the highest point of the calcaneal tuberosity. You're going to draw a line from there to the posterior articular facet, or basically the highest point of the bone. So that's one line. The other line goes from that same spot, posterior articular facet, over to the anterior articular facet also the highest point. So you're going to draw those two lines. And then the angle between them, the smaller angle, that's the bowler's angle. Normally it's about 20 to 40, and if it's less than 20, that's concerning for a depressed fracture. That's abnormal. It can't exclude a fracture, but it's certainly a good indication that there is one. And if you see this angle less than 20, you better be doing some other imaging to try to figure out if you have a calcaneal fracture. So here's another just example um, in an x-ray. Here again you have the uh, the two angles lines, and this should be about 20 to 40 in a normal one. Now here's an example of a fracture that has caused a flattened bowler's angle, and you can see here that this angle between the two is obviously much less than. So let's go through a couple examples. Here we have a normal lateral x-ray, so this is not a fracture. So let's try to identify where our angle is going to be. So it's the highest point of the tuberosity. We're going to draw a line up towards the highest point of the uh, posterior articular facet. And then from there, same angle over to the anterior articular facet. And so there's our angle. And then usually I like to kind of extend that a little further, and that shows us where our angle is going to be. And again, a normal one would be 20 to 40. So here's another one. This is obviously <laughs> has some large fractures in it, but let's check the angle just anyway. Um, so first, you're going to go from the top of the calcaneus here to the posterior facet, and then from there up to the anterior. You can see this one, when we extend it back, it's just, it's almost zero. It's almost flat. Um, it's certainly concerning for a fracture. And lastly, here's another one. I think this one's a little less obvious. You see that there are probably some fracture lines in here, but just looking at it, especially if you're just looking for, say, um, an ankle thumb, you might not necessarily notice that this angle is actually depressed. This is about 15, so it's not even that depressed, but it is. And then actually when you get the Harris view, that's the same x-ray of the same foot, you'll see that it's quite a large fracture there. So the other big thing with calcaneal fractures is that 50% are associated with other injuries, and that's mostly based on the mechanism. 7% have bilateral calcaneal fractures. About 26% of them have some other fracture of the lower extremities. And 10% are going to be associated with a T or L spine fracture. So if they have a fall from height, have any back pain whatsoever, and have a calcaneal fracture, you need to image their T or L spine and look for compression fractures there. There's also a 10% rate of compartment syndrome, 
with calcaneal fractures. The treatment is going to be putting them in a post mold, making them non-weight bearing, and doing icing, elevation, rest. And then they need a surgical uh, referral to orthopedics for uh, surgical management. So three to remember for calcaneal fractures. Mostly you just need to have a high suspicion based on the mechanism. Make sure you always are measuring that bowler's angle, especially just in any ankle film or anyone who had a fall and has that kind of heel or ankle pain. Anything less than 20 is abnormal. And make sure you look for other injuries. Make sure you remember that bilateral feet and T and L spine have a high incidence of fractures as well. Here's the references, and thanks for joining us on EM in 5.